going to fire off that tweet. Welcome to the Orlando Nation pregame show live at Michigan. Brett Barons and Joey Wagner, not Derek Piper. Pitching in. How you doing, Joe? I'm good. I'm not Derek Piper. That's a new nickname. I like it. Do you, uh, okay, so here's here's the deal. Derek is expecting and his wife a baby anytime soon. He did not make the trip. He is a responsible dad there, not leaving his wife Haley at home while he's uh, five, six hours away. So uh, we're, we're glad to have you pitching it's in. good to be here. It's a fun trip. Not better than driving in the snow and uh, <laughs> risking it on the drive up here. No doubt. We had a little bit of a slower drive than normal up here to Michigan as the uh, snow coming in. And Kevin Lighty told me that there is a whole lot of snow coming tomorrow up here uh, in the Mitten State. So we are going to hightail it out of here in the morning and uh, and hope to get back. But the Illini I hope to uh, be a little warmer than they were at State Farm Center on Sunday against Maryland, especially in that second half. Joey, after leading by two at halftime, they came out and uh, missed a whole bunch of layups in the second half and left disappointed. Really, I'd say one of the first times in the second half, at least this season, that this team really didn't show up. Yeah, they didn't. They fought off a lot of the slow starts. Brad Underwood got an older group to avoid those, to, to kind of get over those letdown games, and they did. And then that second half, they missed shots that they've made all year. Their defense just wasn't as sharp as it had been all year. And it was once again Maryland. It feels like Maryland is a team that every year, every other year, play spoiler to Illinois in some capacity, and that's what happened on Sunday. They deserve a lot of credit, but Illinois did things that we just hadn't seen Illinois do. I think it was 16 or 18 layups that Illinois missed, Brett. That is entirely too many, and they were still right there down the stretch. So it's a talented team, but there's not a lot of margin for error when you're missing that many layups. Yeah, uh, you're not going to win a lot of games if you miss that many layups. And if you get out-rebounded, doubled up, right? I think it was 54-26 on the boards. Not a very good effort. And that's what the team left with was that lack of effort. And I think that's what Brad was uh, maybe taken aback by, Joey, because like you mentioned, he's got this veteran team and that's what he was hoping to avoid. Like all of last year where they came out, got these huge deficits, had to fight back. We did see it a couple times. I remember the um, uh, Valparaiso game. They got down big to Roger Powell's team early. They were down yeah. big. Their, their margin, their scoring margin in the first half against low majors was surprisingly low right. in that first half of the season and then something clicked and they started to get a little bit of that vibe maybe it was that east coast trip that seems to be kind of important in my eyes and then you just hadn't seen that they've been firing on all cylinders until sunday and we'll see how they respond tonight this team has not lost back-to-back -back games all season i think that's important where we look at the women's team joey who uh, had only won back-to-back -back games one time before yesterday, and they come out. A little different uh, feeling in that sense. So what kind of things are you looking for on that effort base? Is it the layups? Is it the rebounds? Is it just the intensity early? What are you looking for from this team tonight? Yeah, it's probably rebounding. Uh, if you remember Brad Underwood's press conference Sunday, he just, there was a question going on in the background. He kind of listened, and he was just scanning the stat sheet for something to really complain about, right? Yeah. And he zoned in on the rebounding. And offensive rebounding is something that he's going to bring up a lot. And that's kind of his, one of his barometers of energy, of effort, is what they do on the offensive glass. So I would expect to see them a little more active on that side and trying to set a tone early. Because, again, that's why he built this team, this whole team, right. to not have those. They did. Now it's about the response. Can, can you flush that? Can you learn from it? He talked a lot the other day about understanding why it happened. Can you take all those things and put them behind you and come out against the Michigan team that you should beat? On paper, you should beat this team. We can get him their record recently against Michigan. This is the game they should win. I think he's going to really emphasize that energy and probably has been all week. We'll get to the uh, Michigan rivalry, so to speak, coming up. It's not really been that for Brad Underwood, at least with uh, Juwan Howard and Underwood. There's some feistiness there, which we uh, certainly love to discuss here. Uh, but let's get this uh Terrence Shannon Jr. made his first court appearance in Douglas County, Kansas court today. Uh, we just reviewed that on the news, but on the digital side, if you missed it, uh, first appearance over Zoom. He waived his right to hear the charges and punishments against him. Basically, nothing happened today, Joey, other than he's got his preliminary hearing set for February 23rd, 1.30 to 5, back in Douglas County. 
That's all we know. He's not here. He's not going to be around the team. We're still waiting on the civil suit in federal court in Springfield. But what I take from this, Joey, is that nothing was dropped. Nothing was waived. He's still not here. Nothing has really changed. And this team has to continue to come out and just play as normal. That's how I do it. How do you look at it? Very much the same. It's TRL watch at this point. You're you're watching to see what the judge ruled on his temporary restraining order. They met almost a week ago now, Brett, in Springfield. Uh, We've not heard a ruling on that. That is his path immediately back to the court. Or back to the basketball court, I should say, because this court day in Kansas, when I mean, you can look at the schedule, it's late, right? Yeah. So the path right now would be a TRO unless there was something to change. I'm not smart enough, I don't think, to, to be able to lay no. out what those are, but right now it's the TRO. That, that's what yeah. it is. And I think if he's going to come back this season, he's going to have to get that TRO in favor of him and his defense to try and, and uh, get back on the court. The suit against the University of Illinois, it's just very precarious uh, how it's all played out. And it's all been off the court. The one thing, and we've talked about it, and I think it's worth noting again, is that this team just seems to be focused on what they can control. And I think there is something to be said about that. You were there in Springfield, though, last week, Joey. So, like, what did you see from his teammates trying to support him? There's also a human element in this, which I think is also fascinating. This is their, this is his teammate. And I think that you can't avoid that either. Uh, they all have to be talked about at the same point. Yeah, there were five of his teammates there. Justin Harmon, Luke Goody, Quincy Garrier, Coleman. And Hawkins and Marky Stomas was the fifth one there, and, and they were like, Look, they're waiting like we are. This yeah. isn't one of those where this party of people knows and everyone else is waiting to know. Like everyone is waiting to know. There's no. This is going to leak. Like one person's going to make this decision yep. to judge in Springfield. So everyone's just kind of on watch for that. And in the meantime, these guys have to come out to the basketball court and keep this top. 15 top 25 this push for a big 10 championship going yeah and that is i think it's really like the way they've approached in these first four games has been really impressive five games now they haven't been five and oh but you've not seen that really derail what they were able to do in that early portion of the season and i think now it's like i do wonder if it's kind of a marathon at this point to keep going with that with just right. so much uncertainty linger, lingering over their head and, and we'll see how they come out tonight against Michigan. This is a talented Michigan team, Brett. Yeah, and I'm interested in that response, especially let's say the first uh, two media timeouts, first eight minutes of the game. How does Illinois come out and play and respond after the second half disappointment on Sunday against Maryland? And when, I think we're going to look back at that Maryland, Joey, and just say, at that game and just say, you let one get away. I do think Maryland is better than what it's played so far. They're clearly not a great shooting team though they have two good players that for some reason like you mentioned earlier have played really really well against illinois it's fascinating how some of these matchups go that you just struggle to beat one team and that's been, that's been maryland for illinois yeah you can go back the last couple of years and say really they lost to maryland yep. and then you know, if you'll remember back in the COVID 2020-21 is that back-to-back maryland ohio state at home and then it seems like maryland's always that team that just Illinois can't solve, and yeah. they have, they do have good players. This was a team picked to win or be in the top three to five of the league preseason, and they've underperformed, which is why you look at that and say, okay, I get it, Jameer Young, very talented. Yeah. Julian Reese, very, very talented. But the where they were at, the way they shoot the ball, that should have been a game that you won, and you keep this push. You probably would have moved up to eight or nine yeah. You'd be in, top in the 10 top still. ten. And yeah, you're right. That's going to be one that looks back. It's a quad three loss. I mean, that is, unless Maryland goes on a run, that's going to stink on your resume. Right, and it's the home loss that really gets me in that, Joey. It's like, okay, you know, if you lose a game on the road, okay, that happens. But when you lose at home in a quad three loss, that's what makes it tough for me. You know, I do think Maryland's going to be somewhere in the middle mix. You right? need Maryland to get hot if you're Illinois. Right, Maybe I think turn that, that to a quad two. Right? Yeah, that, that's, no your, that's your goal here. One team that Illinois has played well against is Michigan. Brad Underwood against Jawan Howard, 6-0, and the Illinois-Michigan rivalry. I remember, Joey, I was uh, shooting from right back there during the COVID season. They had us up on the top here. Uh, Trent Frazier hit a bunch of threes right here on the court. The media, we weren't allowed down here anywhere near the court. But for some reason, this has worked very, very well in Underwood's favor. And although Michigan has had more postseason success than Illinois, why do you think this game has been so lopsided for 
Illinois uh, Illinois in its favor against John Howard in Michigan? It's a good question. I know that Illinois has had very clutch moments against yeah. Michigan. You, we can go back really quickly down the line here at the Chrysler Center. I owed a true move right there oh, at yeah. the free throw line over Xavier Simpson's game winner. Yep. You can go to the COVID game that you mentioned. You, I think the scene that we all remember from that is Andre Corbello jumping into Brad Underwood's arms. Yep, happened right there, Joe. I, I, think I remember. Frazier had the Big Ten champ sign. Yep. He was holding yep. up. And then you go back to the 21-22 year, Trent Frazier hits a big three-pointer. That was on kind of his tour of burying Michigan with these tough shots he did at Michigan State a week yeah. prior to that. And that was without Iowa. So Iowa was gone. That's right. So yeah. that was – they've had moments in here that someone has always risen to the occasion. Yeah. Alfonso Plummer was big in that game. He was. Trent gets a lot of credit for that shot he hit, but Alfonso Plummer came up big. They just – Feels like they get up for this team. It does, and with this team, you would like to see more of that even keel. And you're not getting up or down for any game, but they really handled this rivalry well. It helps that Michigan had a former center probably who had a lot to say. <laughs> And Illinois seemed to respond to that. He responded yeah. to that. That was a fun rivalry. I loved it, though, Joe. It was yeah, great. great. He said stuff. It was awesome. Great. It was, it was great fun. I know a lot of fans maybe if you didn't love it as, as much as us watching it, but I think that helped Illinois, right? It helped them kind of rev up for this, and now they've got to rev up again against the Michigan team without Hunter Dickinson, but still with talent. But, look, I mean, come on, Michigan's 7-10. and 10. They've underperformed this right. year. Yeah, no doubt about it. Jawan Howard, uh, seemingly from the outside, is fighting for his job at this point. Now, they've been to a couple of sweet 16s. He's an alum here. I don't know how that's going to play out, but from the periphery, it looks like he is certainly uh, on the hot seat, so to speak, here for what Michigan standard has been for a long time. And one more note on that. I'll always remember the uh, Hunter Dickinson, Kofi Coburn matchups. Like, those were, those fun. were fun, man. I, I really enjoyed those matchups uh, back in three or four years ago. Illinois matched up well. If, yeah. if Michigan was going to have as talented a player as Hunter Dickinson is and remains, having Kofi help yeah. uh, when you're going up in that matchup. To remember, I don't believe Hunter played in Champaign last yep. year. Yep. Uh, so you saw Hunter when you had Kofi, and you'll take that if you're Illinois. And that probably yep. contributed to this uh, this six and zero record for Brad Underwood in Illinois. So Doug McDaniel, the player here that uh, Michigan has now, look, uh, he's playing at home. He's not playing on the road. Some academic issues uh, is the report from up here in Ann Arbor. I don't understand it. It's got to be the strangest thing I've like ever seen. University policy and like uh, we got we got basketballs coming at us. Oh. We're, we're making it. Welcome to the pregame show. Piper's most fried. Uh, he, he got, you know he can kick it there. He get out of the way. You're doing oh, you're doing good though. Now we got the team. Oh, See, we take paradise. you right here on the court on the pregame show. <laughs> Listen. It's university policy. I can't wrap my head around it, though, Joey. Like, how can you be eligible on the road, but ineligible on the road, but eligible at home? Like, I, I don't know. It's I the think thing. The, the logic to me would seem that he can focus rather than missing two days of academics and travel. He can focus on that back here in Ann Arbor. I don't know. You don't see it a lot because it's strange. It I've is never a heard strange, of it. strange suspension. But he's averaging 17 points a game. Who gets the assignment against Doug, and how do they go about trying to slow him down? Well, I would think Ty Rogers would be a guy you're going to put in that conversation. You need Illinois to defend. If you're Illinois, you need to defend Doug McDaniel like you did Boo Booey, like you did Tyson Walker, where those guys got points, but they put up a lot of shots to get there. They were not very efficient. You cannot have it be Jameer Young 2.0, where he comes in and he just picks you apart in the pick and roll. That, that's going to be a problem for Illinois. So you need to figure out what you did well against those two and carry that into the, the defending Doug. Like that's what today is. Today is defend Doug. I know Michigan's got a lot of talent elsewhere, but you've got to keep him in control because he can change the game very, very quickly. And I find it interesting, Joey, from like that Michigan perspective. Look, basketball's all about getting in a roll, right? Getting a rhythm. Like, how do they run their offense without their best player on the road and then like try and they come get to it going again. without them too? So it's going to be yeah. fascinating to see how different this team is in Ann Arbor with them and in Champaign without them. But Michigan is coming off a win, snapping a five game losing streak as they beat Ohio State here in this building on Monday. So maybe the Wolverines can get a little momentum, get a little rolling now that they have two straight games with Doug in the lineup. Uh, what do you make of Ty and his? defensive abilities and then that translating to offense puts up 15 against michigan state a career high last week 
And you know he's going to be amped from Michigan. This is his first time playing back in his home state. On a weird quirk of the schedule, Illinois did not come to Michigan State or Michigan last season. We talked to him yesterday. I think he's pretty excited about the opportunity to be here 90 minutes away from his hometown of Saginaw. I think he is. And I think in some instances, you are worried about a guy pressing. Ty Rogers seems pretty even kill. Like, you, yeah. you know what you're going to get out of him. It'll be interesting if he can get some of those matchups to score in the paint because that's – that's where Ty Rogers scores. If you watch him in warm-ups, if you, I know you can't see him behind us, he's not taking jump shots. There's floaters, there's runners, there's layups, there's move there. He's a guy who scores in the paint, and he can do it effectively, and he can get down there. I don't worry as much defensively. I know they're coming off that tough game where Jameer Young really got where he wanted to go. Offensively, though, you can't have him be in that zero to four point range, especially without Terrence Shannon. There's very little margin for error Great, without yeah. Terrence Shannon. If Quincy Gary ain't off, if Justin Harmon's off, scoring gets tough. Scoring gets tough without Terrence Shannon. So you got to have Ty Rogers in that mix, getting pressure on the rim, getting shots there, and stressing the defense. What did you take away from that Purdue game when Zach Eady guarded him? and really made it tough. Was that a blueprint for opposing defenses to go after him and try and shut him down? We thought so, and then Michigan State tried it, and they didn't have the success. And Ty Rogers got by their bigs. He got by Mati Sissoko. He got into the rim. And I think Brad Underwood said, if you're not 7'5", we'll welcome this matchup. Zach Eady's different. Uh, But it's what's the outlier, right? Is the outlier of Michigan State where he just got by their bigs, or is the outlier of Purdue where they have a human anomaly and a seven foot five guy who's like no one else has him? I don't know that Michigan's going to go at him that way. Certainly, you didn't see Maryland do that. Uh, But I, the next one, not Zach, like that's going to be really interesting to see how he responds to that and how Illinois can attack that matchup. It'll be interesting to see. One guy I'm looking at, too, is Quincy Guerrier after struggling a little bit last game. Uh, I asked Brad Underwood if his wrist was bothering him. I don't know. He just seemed a little bit off. What do you make of him? He seems like that catalyst to me. When Quincy's playing well at that 3-4 position, Illinois is really a lot more effective when you combine him with Ty. Yeah, he is. He's, he hasn't been shooting well. If you remember, he took he had the wrist injury early. Yep. He came back and had a shot at a really high level. And he took an ugly spill at Purdue. He fell. He landed right. really hard on on that wrist. He told us after the game it was hurting him. And you haven't really seen him shoot to the level that he's capable of since then. I also think his ability to pump fake, get to the rim, and drive to the rim can maybe make up for some of that. He didn't play very well against Maryland. You know, Brad Underwood pointed it out yesterday to us. They had a rebound on the baseline that he should have got. There was no one there, and he let it go out of bounds. It's a critical moment in the game, so you need him to bounce back in a big way because, again, you know what Marcus Domask is going to give you to this point. You need Quincy Gary to be that other secondary scorer, that level guy. You need Justin Harmon to be in that conversation. Otherwise, it gets tough. That's what I'm saying. There's very little margin for error without – I mean, it's in the hot cake because I'm All-American, right? I mean, there's you need him to be at that level, and I think he matches up with Michigan well. He's, he's that, you know, we saw for a long time in the Brad Underwood tenure, if you had a big four, a stretch four, you were going to have some success oh, against yeah. Illinois, and, and Quincy Gary can kind of put a, put the brakes on that a little bit. I think this is a big matchup for him tonight. And you mentioned Justin Harbin. On a short bench, he's the other guy for me that has to play better than he did against Maryland. We've seen him do that. Really, the last month of the season, he's taken on a bigger role and played well. He's that other player to me, Joey, that I look at and say, hey, Justin's got to come in and score between five and ten points. If he gets more than that, you feel really good. He's got to come in and make a couple threes and and give that offense a a little bit of a spark. Yeah, especially making threes. His ability to to stretch the floor a little bit and give Quincy, give Marcus some space to work down in that paint is really important. It does seem... I don't have the stat. It just seemed like he always misses his first three. And then he gets really hot really quickly, or he has. We've seen him do that. we will run off two out of three or three out of five and start to really put it together in that way. But, yeah, his, his presence off the bench is, is really big. And at some point, while we're talking about the bench, does Brad Underwood expand it at any point? Because right now they're playing – Six and a half, seven guys? Max I mean, seven, like six that, really. Is that sustainable? I mean, I think you can yeah. make a pretty fair argument that it's not. You know, is that more minutes for Dane Danger? Is that Drinkins, Wallhorn, Nico Moretti? I mean, are one of those three guys going to kind of extend that bench a little bit? Yeah, interesting to see that as uh, Dre, 
he sticks out Mita more than Nico. Nico coming off uh, the foot injury and, and seeing how he bounces back. I think you got to give him some run at some point. I'm just not sure when that right time will be. All right. I don't know when the moment is. Right. right. It's asked, tough. It's tough in the Big Ten. I asked Brad Underwood after the game. He said the timing wasn't right against Maryland for Nico. But what do you look for? Right. I mean, is it obviously there's some level of how you perform in practice, but it, you, you got to get some of these guys yeah. some breathers. I know they're well conditioned, and I know that. Guys like Coleman Hawkins, Marcus Omas can play those heavy minute loads, but still a lot of Big Ten games left, yeah. and you've got to expand that a little bit. Yes, game six of 20 in the Big Ten slate coming up tonight. Like, they're going to have to get a little bit more depth in there at some point, I would imagine. Maybe not like now in the next two weeks, but get back to me in like late February, right in game 14, 15, 16 of the Big Ten schedule. And then I think that's going to become a little bit more prevalent and a little bit uh, more of a question going forward. I remember you got a you got a prediction. Do you remember that? Oh, I did not remember that. Here we go. Can Put I him on the spot. Friend? Can I phone a friend? Uh, Derek you, Piper. Derek okay, Piper's well, you can say what Piper uh, put will, on. I have the, his three keys. He's really good at those. Did you get it down? You got it ready to go? I will do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you for your prediction, too, but we can put Piper on the spot. That's fine. I, I think Illinois is going to win. I think okay. it's, you know, I don't need Derek Piper. Do your own. I don't need Derek Piper. Okay, don't do it. I will take 74 to 68 Illinois okay. wins at Michigan. All right. Michigan's defense is not great. All right. I think it's going to be a little bit higher scoring. I'm going to say 79-72, Illinois. Look, it's, it's hard to win on the road. We've yeah, this pick, like, I think there's something to be said about that and what a lot of people view this Illinois team as to come into Michigan and win. Like, I know Michigan 7-10. and 10, The Big Ten teams though, have been overwhelmingly winning at home. Yeah. So to come in and get one, Brad Underwood a week and a half ago, cold road wins like Golden Bars, this is a big one. To go out and get one on the road, I know it's not a great team. It's not going to look – it's not going to be a quad one win, but it's one that I think they need to go in here with. All right, we got plenty of coverage coming up later. I'll be live here from the court on the WCI 3 News at 10. Who's on the podcast tonight? What do you guys got on a lot of work? Uh, Derek and Jeremy are okay. going to podcast from So home. they just let you watch the game and just then get tie? to watch the game. Tie. How about you? I know. It's uh, vacation a little bit here. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll look forward to all that coverage coming up on Illini Inquirer. I know Derek's got uh, his three keys in a pick. Did he continue to do that? He did continue okay. to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah. There you go. Well, he's got all that content for you on Illini Inquirer. We'll have plenty of content on WCIA and WCIA.com. We'll have, have uh, Brad Underwood's post game press conference and stream live after the game on these same digital channels wherever you're watching now. Joey, thanks for pitching in, man. Hey, thanks, man. It was fun. It was fun? We'll catch you after the game. Enjoy it, everyone. 7.30 Central tip on Fox Sports 1. For Joey Wagner, I'm Brett Barrett. Thanks so much for watching.